Well, we're going to have a, a talk now about uh, open source banking. We're going to speak uh, uh, with uh, Abraham Tashin. He's open bank lead at the Department of Finance, uh, talking about uh, the development of something known as open, uh, open banking in Canada. Abraham, thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, explain, first of all, what open banking is uh, in, in simple terms, and then we'll get started on, on some of the uh, implications for Canadian banking customers. Sure. Open banking is a system that empowers consumers to direct their financial institutions to share their data with third parties of their choosing. And I, and I choose my words carefully because consumers are at the center of this. Now, perhaps the best way to understand this is with an example. Uh, I'd suspect that many of your viewers have multiple banking relationships, perhaps a checking account at one bank, a TFSA somewhere else, an RSP somewhere else, a mortgage, you get the picture. Now imagine you want to get a good financial snapshot of where you stand. If you're like me, you'll likely spend your Sunday afternoon downloading a bunch of Excel files and trying to crunch the numbers. Imagine a situation empowered by open banking where an app helps a consumer tap into every single one of their banking relationships, pull that data out, and give them a healthy financial snapshot of where they stand in terms of their spending, in terms of their savings, and just in terms of their financial planning. So does it, it then the the theme here is a coordinated uh, a coordinated relationship with different financial institutions is the is the, uh, the gist of this that, that Canadians that would then be more free to establish banking relationships uh, with numerous different uh, parties than perhaps they are now. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the contributing factors of open banking is to create more innovation and competition in uh, the Canadian financial sector. Uh, when you have a system that facilitates the transfer of consumer data between parties, it opens up uh, the sphere of possibilities with respect to financial services. And I won't ask you to comment on this, but I'll just tell our viewers, uh, because you're not a, a, a stock market analyst, but I'll tell our viewers uh, that a financial uh, services analyst at Stiefel GMP Canada within the past week has released a report. The headline on that report is why open banking could kill the goose that lays the golden egg. And that analyst goes on to say, uh, for the Canadian banking sector overall, uh, quote, we believe that uh, the increased competition from open source banking uh, could uh, uh, could uh, lead to uh, increased competition, more transparency on pricing, reduced frictions around switching costs, and could and could ultimately result in quote sizable downward pressure on fee-based revenue. So there's one analyst who says it's still early days, uh, but the threat to the incumbent bank uh, banks uh, in Canada is is uh, meaningful. Uh, what about concerns about um, uh, the security of data? and uh, 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 that data being hacked into. I might, a lot of people might feel apprehensive uh, that if they're, if they're able to connect with more institutions simultaneously, that there may be more risk involved. Of course, of course. In an open banking system, it's not anybody that will have access to the data that rests with financial institutions. We'll set up an accreditation process, essentially a fancy way of saying we'll, we'll vet third parties that want to have access uh, to financial data that's held at banks. And some of the vetting requirements will be related to privacy, to cybersecurity, essentially to make sure that the consumer is protected so that when they're exercising their choice, when the bank gives effect to the choice that they make to pass that data on, it's done in a secure way that'll maintain confidence in our system and will develop innovation. One would expect Ottawa to consult with the banks on something like this, and indeed you have done that. Uh, the, the Department of Finance has done that. What were the outcomes of those consultations with the what we'll call the incumbent bankers? Well, about 18 months ago, we ran uh, a series of consultations, and the tone of those discussions, I found, has really changed over the last couple of years. Initially, when we started talking about open banking in Canada, the focus was more on perhaps the doom and gloom of all the ways that this could go wrong. But during the consultations, the common theme was one of uh, a positive attitude, one of an encouraging way forward in the sense that there's, there's buy-in within the industry. There's an understanding that we need to put consumers at uh, the middle of this to empower them to pass that data. Data on. And just going back to uh, your, your previous report, if you look at uh, developments in other jurisdictions, there's been many cases where banks have leveraged open banking to better serve their customers. Nothing stopping them from tapping into the data of other financial institutions to get a better snapshot of their clients. Which international jurisdictions, which countries are uh, in the lead here? 
I'd say the UK, which was a forerunner in this, as well as Australia. Their system has been up and running for a bit now. And the UK does a very, very good job of reporting the performance of their system. And over the last couple of months, um, the uptake has been really remarkable. In fact, if they continue on this trend, um, the numbers will be really, really impressive. So initially, there might be a, there was a slowdown in those jurisdictions. But as consumers became more and more comfortable with the potential of open banking, it really took off there. What is the path forward here in Canada? What can Canadians expect from the work that you're doing? Well, we've got 18 months to, and we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We need to set up the pillars uh, of the open banking system in the sense of the accreditation that I mentioned. We need to look at privacy requirements. We need to look at cyber requirements. And at the end of this 18 month period, we will have a system that globally I'm convinced we will be proud of that will empower consumers to have more power over their data. Abraham Tashin, Abraham Tashin, I'm sorry, Open Banking Lead at the Department of Finance. Thank you very much for this conversation on, on open banking, not open source banking, as I referred to it during our conversation. Thanks, Abraham.